Hi to all you out there in internet land and welcome to this video on fractions on a number line. Now you're going to be saying to me, what do you mean fractions on a number line? Why would we have fractions on a number line? Those of you who are currently being taught by me will have known that from your pretest that there were some small errors regarding this particular line of work. So this video here is trying to help you get that sorted. Those of you who are watching in internet land, welcome. Don't worry about this if I talk about students, it's just me trying to teach as well as record videos. It's lovely having you. Thank you so much for taking the time and coming to see me. So, in this lesson, I will be devoting to completing some of the work you found complicated in the year six section of the pretest on real numbers. Identifying numbers on a number line, and in a slightly later video, because I've split them, adding decimal numbers. I know, adding decimal numbers for year seven. Come on, guys, we can do this. I think it's important to note that if any point in a lesson you get stuck or need to help, just to ask your teacher. I know it's terrifying. I know everyone thinks the world will end. I know that everyone believes that in asking for help, someone somewhere will judge you as being stupid. Trust me, as a teacher, I really don't. And I don't think anyone else does. You're just more worried about the feeling that we'll judge you. Don't. We won't. We would be delighted to give you a hand. So go and ask someone. And if it doesn't work, ask someone else. The work in this module will actually build on the work which has been covered in other modules. So those of you, again, who've been following along know that we've been doing things by chance, number and place value. And we've dealt with fractions, multiplying by 10, 100,000, and adding decimal numbers. This module is on real numbers. And obviously they're different from fake numbers, and there's no such thing as a fake number. But we're going to start with numbers on the number line. So here is a basic number line. It's a line with numbers. As we have in previous modules used the idea of negative numbers, I've put them on as well. So zero is where life gets exciting. Zero is where it all started. In the beginning, there was the light. Oh, God. Going this way. We count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, right? So when negative numbers, we count this way with 0, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, minus 5. Given a blank number line, I'm pretty sure we could all put numbers onto it by filling in the gaps. So for example, if I put that there as 0, I'm hopefully sure that everybody out there will now be able to use that number line or their own knowledge to fill in the missing gaps. Well, mm, let me think. What's the number between 0 and 2? It's 1. What's the number between 3 and 5? It's 4. And what would that number there be negative 1? And even if I made the numbers more complicated, let's say 100. That's 120, 140, 150, and 170 fairly sure by knowing those numbers there we'd be able to fill this one in here as 110 130 and 160 that's for whole numbers but then when we get to the idea of fractions things become a little bit more complicated or at least people think they do now fractions is one of those things that i would never want to teach down in junior school it's hard to try and teach this stuff. So what we tend to do is we give you all sorts of rules and sadly you forget them all. But it's really, really important just to know that a fraction is part of a whole. If I see that, every one of you will know that that's red as a half. It means I've got half of something. But what does it mean? Well, it means that I have eaten one piece out of two. So if I had a pizza, I've eaten and it's been cut into two pieces. Assuming the pieces are even, I've had one piece. Now, the top number is called the numerator. And the bottom number is called the denominator. And I had no idea of the best way to try and remember them. But one of my wonderful year sevens turned around and said, well, the denominator is down. Why? Because down and denominator start with the same letter. Numerator was nup. Nup. I have no idea why NUP, but NUP, yeah, I know, you've probably got other ways, and if you have, let me know, because it'd be great, I'll feature it in a later video, but again, this here is my numerator, and this here is my denominator. What does this mean? Well, if I had a pizza in three equal slices, I would effectively be eating two of them, and you would be left with the one. Fractions 
can also be cut into all sorts of small parts. Now, am I going to be able to cut this into 15? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. No, I can't do this, so I'm going to rub it out because 15 would be really hard to do. But again, the top number is the numerator and the bottom number is the dominator. No, 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 no. It's really important to know this. Fractions on a number line. So if a fraction is a part of a whole, then we can split a whole into parts just like a number line. We simply need to look at the denominator to know how many parts. So if you remember, when I had a half, I knew that my pizza was going to be cut into two pieces. If I have two thirds, I knew my pizza was going to be cut into three pieces. And if I had eight on 15, then I knew my pizza was going to be cut into 15 pieces. So if I was to draw a number line and split it into halves, say this is the number zero and this is the number one. Well, how many pieces do I have to split the line into to show halves? Two. So I just put one little gap in. How many gaps are there? There's one gap. There's two gaps. So this bottom number, this denominator, actually says the number of gaps between zero and one. What about drawing a number line and splitting it into thirds? Well, if we think about the thirds, what's the bottom number? It's a three. So I'm looking at having three gaps. Here's zero. Here's one. Three gaps actually means I draw two lines. Here is gap one. There's my second gap. There's my third gap. Wow. Now, I now know that that must be one third and two thirds. How do I know that? Well, I automatically know that it's got to be a thirds because I've got these three gaps. And these numbers here just count up. Zero, one, two. Now, obviously, that's a Silly example, but let's do fifths. So we're now going to split a number line into fifths. Here is my number line zero and one. So fifths have a bottom number of, strangely, a five. So we want five gaps or four little marks. Right, so five gaps. One, two, three, four little tick marks. One, two, three, four, five gaps. How do I now number this? Well, we just count. We know it's fifths. So the first one's got to be one fifth, two fifths, three fifths, and four fifths. This is awesome. Now, actually, I could have written that as zero fifths. And well, I can't write that as one fifth because that would make no sense because we've got one fifth. But if we were counting up, we'd have five fifths. Whoa, what does that actually mean? Well, anything divided by itself is always the number one. So, last example, draw a number line and split it into tenths. Wow, no, half my number line's just gone missing. So there's zero and there's the number one. We want tenths, which means we've got to have 10 gaps or nine little marks. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Right, they're not all equidistant, but it's close. And then you just literally count. One tenth, two tenths, three tenths, four tenths, five tenths, six tenths, seven tenths, eight tenths, nine tenths. If I wanted to, ten tenths and zero tenths. And that literally is all there is. But what about identifying missing numbers on a number line? Well, imagine I've got this, 0 and 1. Now, I'm not going to tell you what fraction it is, because you should be able to work this out and then fill in all the lines for me. How are you going to do that? Well, remember, the bottom line of the fraction, the denominator, will tell you the number of gaps there are. So between 0 and 1, count how many gaps there are. Whoa, seven gaps. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven gaps. That must mean that my little things there are sevenths. So one seventh, two sevenths, three sevenths, four sevenths, five sevenths, six sevenths, and seven sevenths if I wanted to, and zero sevenths if I wanted to as well. So there we go. So I've just filled in some missing numbers on a number line just by counting the number of gaps. What about this one? Zero and one. And we've got one. Hmm. How many gaps have we got? 
One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. They must be fifths. One, fifth, two, fifths, three, fifths, four, fifths. And I'm pretty much done. So long as I can count the gaps, I should know what they've been split into. Well, I know it says questions for you to do. Find the missing fractions expressed with letters on the following number lines. But do you know what? I think you've got this. There is always work for you to do. I'll give that to you shortly. But if you've been watching in internet land, thank you so, so much for watching. Hopefully you found this interesting and importantly useful. All right, I'm going to move on to my next video, which is going to be adding decimal numbers. All right, until then, I'll see you next time. Hey guys, if you've enjoyed watching this video, why not tune in and subscribe to get updates of when I do other videos. Alternatively, click this video that's coming up now, or just zip on over to mathsguru.com, M-A-F-F-S guru.com, where you can actually access all the videos in a nice, easy to use way.